Cheers. So uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this morning, we are working on mind emotions. And uh, from our check-in, we're going to bring in um, quite a bit to do with uh, the shoulders, the arms, the hands, uh, the heart, and uh, relaxing the mind. We're going to also strengthen the mind by meditating on the moon. We're in a full moon right now, so a good time to do that. Just find your place, your Tadasana. And... Bend your knees, feel your feet and relax your head and inhale, opening up the chest and just find what rotation works for your shoulders. So um, I know a lot of you have rotator cuff injuries, just opening the arms to the side, palms facing up or down your choice. Exhale, bend the knees and relax. The neck and shoulders, inhale, opening the heart. And exhale, adding some sound. Inhale. When you open, you can focus on the upper body. When you exhale, focus on the lower body. Inhale, opening the upper back, neck and shoulders, head, neck, and exhale, feeling from the belly button all the way down the legs into the feet. Inhale, feeling the rising energy of Udana, the upward flowing energy. Exhale, feel the grounding energy of Apana. And adding Ujjayi if you like, constricting the throat. And you can start bringing the arms a little higher, higher and if you like, you can stretch the fingers apart on the inhale and exhale, you can make fists, just adding this for arthritis in the hands or just keeping mobile with lots of computer work. If you're a student writing exams at this time online, it's, it's also good to just work with some hand yoga. And I've talked about the feet being a, a resource for relaxation. The hands are another one. So in the somatic sense of our body, the brain tracks the feet and next the hands what they're doing and it's interesting that the yogis uh, used the hands a lot to focus the mind with mudras. So I'm gonna try to add a little bit of that today. And you can make those fists if you like. Just notice at one point, maybe your neck and shoulders tightens up. So as soon as I bring my arms higher, I, my uh, neck flexors go like this and I go, no, it <laughs> doesn't like that. So just assess that for yourself. Just warming up the whole body. And staying in stillness if you can. I learned yesterday that uh, with advanced Qigong meditators, Tai Chi practitioners, that they do standing meditation in a pose similar to Tadasana, their mountain pose. So finding your mountain pose or your samastiti, even standing. Place the hands in either Anjali Mudra at the heart, or you can modify this hands down. Or if you want to ground a bit more, hands on the belly. And make an intention today linked to our focus of mind and emotions and all the other 
things we talked about that might be relevant to you. Maybe there's a word or an image that you can bring to mind as your personal mantra mind tool for today. Maybe say that word or see that image and try to feel it in your whole body through as many senses as you can. And when you're ready, we're going to get moving again. You're going to inhale, come up, and we're going to play with doing the niyasam that we've been working on a lot with this movement. So when you inhale, you're going to come up the finger. When you exhale, you're going to come down the finger with the thumb. Inhale up and exhale down. I'll show it that way. Maybe you can see that better. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down, okay? And you're gonna do this with me or in your own time as we come up. We're gonna do two rounds, so that's gonna be eight. So inhale up, the finger, and exhale, finger down, thumb. And you can play with moving the neck and shoulders as you do this to comfort. Sometimes it, for balance, it's uh, much better to gaze at the floor in front of you about six feet or more. If you can, maybe looking straight ahead or even up to uplift your energy. Feeling your hands as you inhale, feeling your feet as you exhale perhaps. When you finished your two rounds, just standing in samastiti, even standing. And just a reminder that you can always put a belt on your ankles when you're doing this. Block between the thighs or anything that just helps you stabilize. You can bring your arms to any height that works for you. And just resting in your samastiti. Let your breath slow down. Okay, so we're gonna move to uh, warrior. We're gonna do this a little differently. We haven't done this this turn yet. So we're gonna use the wall. I hope you have one. If you don't, um, you can just do it freestyle without the wall. I'll show that too. So I'm gonna start with my left foot forward and I'm gonna cue it this way just to make it simpler. And I've got my yeah, my left toes at the baseboard, my right foot back, heel to heel alignment approximately, my hands are at the wall. And as I exhale, I'm going to push the wall and stretch away. 
And this can be really good if you've got an injury in your shoulder, that position. And then as you inhale, you're going to draw your hands back with this. Okay, I'm gonna show this a different way if you don't wanna use a wall. So you can do it this way. And if you've got arthritis in your arms and your hands, this might actually be a better modification rather than pressing into the wall. So I'm giving this to those of you with arthritis in your hands. And then as you inhale, making fists and drawing back. I learned this from Gary Craftsell years ago. He's a great teacher in our tradition in uh, California now. And what he said is that this warrior, I've modified it, of course, made it my own, but this position was the traditional warrior of uh, Kerala from the martial arts traditions. That's what it used to look like. So that version and then the wall version. So I do this for neck and shoulders. It's very empowering. This is what we call a power pose. And there is some evidence that putting our position in this shape increases a sense of well being. And we don't know exactly why. Some have suggested it increases testosterone levels, which sometimes for women can be a good thing but there isn't clear evidence about that. In any event, it makes us feel good. Yoga says it heats us up. It gets our energy moving. Inhale. As yoga therapy says this is a Brahmana pose. It gets our energy moving. So you can adjust your stance. You can make it a little longer. And you can also add bringing your toes back towards your nose as you exhale in your front foot, of course. Place the foot down, bend the knee, and move into your warrior. That back leg, if you want to work with stretching the calf a bit more, you can try to make the back foot parallel to the front. It'll be a little harder when you bend the knee, so just notice that. Doing this round eight times. And I'm doing this for rotator cuff injuries in the room. Empowerment, courage. And we're gonna throw in a little lower back work as well. And just finishing up. And notice how you feel. That's a nice gentle version of warrior. Just noticing how you feel having done that. Okay, so we're gonna put a couple of warriors together now and face the other direction, freestyle. So we've worked on this one a lot. Inhale, coming forward, arms at the sides, and maybe rotating the thumbs back if that doesn't hurt you, and lifting the head, nodding it up. Exhale, come to the center, palms together, straightening the front leg, and stretching away with the hands, again, stretching the back of the shoulders and the upper back. Inhale, moving into the lower back. And exhale, release. If that back arch bothers you, you can just do this position and skip step two, okay? Inhale, coming forward. Exhale, coming back, 
straightening the front leg, bringing your hands forward, stretching the upper back. Inhale, warrior one, Virkrasana, palms together or apart, that feels better for you. Maybe looking up slightly to lift your energy, exhale, release. Keep this going in your own timing. Feel free to go into your own practice. And just notice which version feels better on your body. Maybe you just want to do part one. Maybe you just want to do this part two, just the warrior one position. Notice which one feels better on your back, neck, and shoulders. So this pose, again, is a power pose for encouraging courage. Cur is in the French, in the Latin, heart. Opening the heart, giving the heart strength. What we call in yoga, stiram. Strength. This first position that I'm in right now is one of my favorite ones for neck and shoulders. And just finishing up after you've done six to eight in your own timing. We'll just, just to change this up a bit, just coming to the fore and then swiveling to the other side. So you know I always like to change things, <laughs> make it a little more interesting. Inhale, coming forward, hands to your place. The hands can be facing forward or thumbs moving back and lifting the head, looking forward, maybe up a bit. Exhale. Rounding the upper back, bringing the hands forward, stretching the backs of the shoulders, the upper back, inhale. Warrior one, or you can skip this piece, looking straight or up to the sky to uplift the energy and exhale, release. You can add holds after inhale to increase the Brahmana effect, the expansion effect. Holding after inhale, half the length of your inhale or the same length, start with half. This is used for depression, as a counter for depression. It's also used to promote joy, ananda, endless joy. Working with the heart energy. So as the days get darker and shorter, I find it's really important to up these Brahmana poses, these expansive heating poses. And maybe just one more round, or you can finish if you're done. And notice how you feel. So today I'm going to be trying to cue a little bit less and just get you finding your practice. Find your samastiti. Always coming back to the balance point. In yoga, we're working with stiram strength, sukham softness, moving towards ananta, infinite harmony. And from that place, we start to gain a resilience. 
We're less affected by the ups and downs of life, by the opposites, it said. Creating that harmony, another word for this in yoga is sattva. Creating that harmony, that balance. And then from there, we start to experience what is deep in our hearts already there. That ananda, that endless joy. That shanti, that peace. Okay, we're gonna do a four bend after all that. So inhale, bringing the arms up and if you want to work a little bit more with the hands, you can interlock the fingers at the top like this, okay? If you like, and bringing your arms to your place. And then exhale, if it's comfortable, drawing the belly in, so you see I'm rounding my lower back and bending to my knees to protect my spine. I'm rounding the back like a wave crashing down. And then inhale, if it's comfortable, you can pull opposite elbows as you do this, or bring the arms to the side. I'm lengthening my spine, hinging from the hips and coming up. And I'm gonna add a little lift of the chest as I do this as well. And then exhale. Pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in, bending the knees, rounding the spine as the wave crashes down. And then inhale as the wave rises, coming out of the hips. Keep this going. So you can modify, if this is too much for you, you can modify arms at the sides. And inhale, arms coming up. So you know, if you have some shoulder arthritis going on, for example, this might feel better to do something like this or this, just up and down. So please modify for your body. Everything I say is a suggestion. And play with the choices I give you and Let's see which one feels better today for you. The next one, we're going to stay forward and just move into relaxation. Letting go of stress, anxiety, stretching the lower back. So decompressing the spine, it's a bit compressed. Decompressing also the upper back. It's a little bit of traction here by just hanging, letting the spine expand, decompress. Letting the nervous system down regulate as the head comes lower than the heart. Heart disease, remembering to keep the head up or up and down or coming to the seat of a chair or a countertop. Same with post-concussion, you might not want to come all the way down. So play with the use of the fingers, the hands, first two fingers between the first two toes. You can add some movement by inhale, looking up and exhale, coming down. It's called stiti. That can feel really good on the upper back as well as the lower back. Do you feel complete? Starting to come up quite lazily, walking your hands up the front of the legs to the thighs. Inhale, 
Exhale, stay. Inhale, coming up the rest of the way very slowly now. Might be a little dizzy after that change of position. Finding your samastiti. Just resting here for a moment. Okay, so we're gonna move into some lateral bends and rotated twists. So I'm trying to do all the movements of the spine today as review. So we're gonna start as a precursor to uh, work with flossing the nerves, which I don't think we've done this term. So bringing the feet apart and finding your goddess pose, if that's successful for your knees, if not, make your Turn out your feet in a way that feels comfortable for your body, okay? So the legs here are an add-on to a little stretch to the inner thigh and prepare for this position. This is where we're going. So holding those plates. Inhale here and exhale, pressing the hands to the side spreading the fingers apart, spread them really apart and bringing the hands back to where it feels comfortable, the fingers facing up first, central nerve, medial nerve, inhale center, fingers facing back, holding those trays, exhale to the side, tipping the fingers back away from the screen. And inhale, center, fingertips facing back again to my window or away from the screen. Exhale, center, and then tip the fingertips forward. So the hands are flexed, turn the fingertips forward, that's right. And inhale, coming up, fingertips back, elbows forward. And give it a shake. We're gonna do another round of that. Okay, so hold those trays. Inhale here, exhale, push to the side. So there's a bit of a theme today with a lot of pushing. Pushing to the side and bring the hands back to a place where you feel some sort of stretch in those nerves through the fingers. Inhale, center. Exhale, side, tip the fingertips back as you bend the knees in your goddess pose. Inhale, center. Exhale, side, tipping the fingertips forward. So they're forward now, yeah, towards the screen. Inhale, center. And exhale, give it a shake. Okay, last round. Inhale here, exhale side, fingertips up. Inhale center. Exhale side, fingertips back. This is all, also a lot of strength work for the arms. You might be feeling that surprisingly. Inhale center. Exhale, side, fingertips forward. Inhale, up. And release. All right, so I'm always surprised how much work that is for the arms. Now we're going to move into um, Parshva Konasana. So the position with the legs is like warrior two, quite a big stance. I've got both feet facing towards my right is gonna look like your left. Heel to heel alignment or heel to arch alignment with the feet. Finding the knee tracking over that second toe. And we're gonna add some nerve flossing to this. So coming to the side, starting with that first position, fingertips up. Inhale, coming up. Now we're flossing the whole nerve side to side as you come up, tip your head to the other shoulder. So 
That's your inhale, exhale, side, fingertips back. Inhale, coming up, scooping at the heart. Exhale, side, fingertips forward. Inhale, coming up. One more round. Exhale, side, fingertips up. Inhale, center. Exhale, side, fingertips back. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, side, fingertips forward. Inhale, up. And this time we're gonna stay in the position Parshva Konasana. So you can be like this, just like this, if you've got like a shoulder injury. I just wanna be with your hand on your hip. You can put your hand on your lower back. Easier palm up versus palm down. That's more rotation. It's comfortable that hand to the sky that upper arm rather, and then that upper arm can be along your ear. Now your lower arm can be resting on your thigh, so that might be best for your alignment. You want your shoulders aligned. You want that arm that's along your ear, you want it nice and long as if it's coming out of your leg and your side body as one line. Hopefully you can see that in my positioning. And then seeing if you wanna come down, Lower, opening that hip. You could use a chair to rest your lower hand on. And we're gonna move here. Exhale, bend the elbow, turn the head, look down. Inhale, extend. Look front or up. Exhale, bend and turn. Inhale, extend. Now try to keep that elbow going down towards your hip as you bend. This is working with some arthritis in the elbow and lengthening the side body. You can spread those fingers apart when you inhale and exhale, make a fist if you like that feeling through your hands. And one more time. And then come forward carefully into a forward bend. Take a rest. Maybe extend the hands forward as if you're doing a down dog. And then moving here, inhale. Putting some weight on the hands. So a mini plank, looking up. Exhale, bring the hips back and tuck the chin in as the hips come back. Inhale, aligning the shoulders over the wrists and Looking forward or up a little bit. Exhale, coming back. This is for the upper back, neck, and shoulders. And strengthening the arms. And when you're ready, coming back. Coming up, and we're just gonna step in for a moment, give the legs a break from that position. And just rest in your samastiti before we do the same thing on the other side. We'll focus on the upper back, neck and shoulders today, lower back as well, decompressing it and relaxing the mind, working with mind emotions. And when you're ready, we're gonna go to the other side. 
finding your warrior two position, heel to arch alignment or heel to heel alignment, bending that front knee over your second toe, just finding what that is for you. And then we're gonna work with the flossing action So that's your exhale going in towards your partial kanasana, your fingertips facing up to the sky, and then inhale, bringing that hand to the heart as you tip your ear to the opposite shoulder. Exhale, tipping the fingertips back. Inhale, center. Keep your ear opposite shoulder. Flossing the whole nerve. Exhale, starting at the center and then tipping the fingertips forward. Inhale, center. One more round. Exhale, side, fingertips facing up. Inhale, center. You might find one side's very different than the other. Exhale, side, fingertips back. Inhale, center. Exhale, side, fingertips forward. Inhale, center. Now moving into Parshva Kanasana. Side angle pose and start with that lower arm on the thigh, if you like. The other hand to the sky. Or have the hand on the hip and just work on aligning the shoulders or hand on the lower back. So any of those options that work for your neck and shoulders. If it's comfortable, you can extend that top arm along your ear and try to make it one long line. Try to align the shoulders. And then finding your position, maybe adding that bend of the elbow, looking down as you exhale. Maybe coming lower into the legs. Inhale, extend, looking front or up to the sky. Exhale, bend, pulling down, you can add that fist, if you like, of the hand. Inhale, extend. You can spread your fingers apart. It feels good for your hands. Exhale, bend and turn. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bend and turn. Do this around six times. If you can, if it's too much, just go into your forward bend earlier and rest. And when you've had enough, going into your forward bend, do this very carefully, very slowly, knees a little bit bent. Finding your Prasadita Pada Uttanasana spread foot at forward bend, maybe bringing the hands forward. Release the head down as you exhale. Inhale, bringing the weight forward so that the wrists and shoulders are lined. Looking straight ahead, looking up a bit maybe. Exhale, bring the hips back and stretch the upper back. Neck and shoulders into the lower back. Keep that going, that movement, if that feels good. Otherwise, just stay in your forward bend position. You can also do this with hands on the seat of a chair or on a table, even better. This really works with kyphosis, tightness in the upper back neck and shoulders. Strengthening those arms.
And when you're ready, maybe walk the feet in a bit and slide the hands up to the thighs. Inhale, back straight, exhale, stay. Inhale, coming up, finding your samastiti. And notice how you feel. And that was quite a hard little workout. So, you've done some good exercise today. Hopefully, you're feeling energetically really in your body right now. After I do, yeah, even less yoga, I really start to feel my side that tends to not engage as much, which is my left side, because of my scoliosis and probably all sorts of other reasons. I start to feel this aliveness in it. So if there's a part of your body that doesn't function as well, just notice if you're starting to feel the energy or the prana, the circulation, the aliveness in that part of your body. And I just like to do this undulation of bending the knees, looking down, inhale straightening, looking forward or up, just to recalibrate, rest, and find that balance point, that ananta, that balance point. Okay, so I had a request for some um, chaturanga work, which <laughs> I haven't done a chaturanga in years myself because uh, it doesn't really work for my body anymore. But wall chaturanga is still something I do. Um, so you might find this helpful. I hope you do. Uh, you can do it with fists if doing this with the wrist doesn't work for you because of arthritis. So hands at the wall with your um, legs away, and you're just going to have to find the place that works with best for you. So um, classically, um, it would be wrists coming right out of the shoulders, but you might want to come a little bit further down or further up might feel better for you. So normally it would be easier with the hands higher and harder with the hands lower. You can also angle your hands out. So you can turn them out, your fingers out. And you can make fists as well. You can do this on the floor if you want to challenge. You can just do push-ups. You can do it on an elevated surface like a bench, okay, to make it harder. A chair, if you prefer. I'm doing the wall version today just to show this to you. So inhale here. This is Chaturanga. So as we exhale and out in yoga, we actually keep the elbows parallel and come down. So this is part of the sun salutation, which we skipped last week on the chair, which I found a little challenging for my brain to keep the mantras all straight. Because it's a little different than my own practice. So I still do this in some salutations. Inhale here, exhale, bend. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. And bring your feet further back also to make it a little bit harder. Keep those elbows parallel if you can. So wall push ups. One of you shared that this positioning actually really helped with some rotator cuff stuff going on in the shoulder. So this strength work, skidam work of yoga, sometimes skidam or strength work is the way to go more than the sukham, the flexibility side of things. Sometimes it can help create softness in the opposite muscles. OK. 
you're getting tired at any time, take a break. And then as a counter pose, when you feel you've had enough, just go into your wall standing pose. So you can bring the hands lower so that you're in Ardha Uttanasana, half forward bend. You can also do this at a countertop or table like this. Especially if you've got wrist issues and flexing the hands does not feel good. You can rotate the palms up. You can do this on a chair as well. Spinal stretch. And then if you like adding on a movement of the hips side to side, getting the side body again underneath the armpits. As you exhale side, inhale center, exhale other side. And center. And we're ready. Coming out of that. And finding your samastiti. I'm going to introduce this moon chant as our transition to the floor. And I'm going to do it uh, with four bends. You can just listen. This is a little bit of Sanskrit. And if you want to try, um, as I do the exhale move, you can try to repeat the chant that I do on the inhale and the exhale. Okay, so I'm going to do the same part of the chant on the inhale and the exhale. You can join me on the exhale part or just listen the whole time, okay? So this chant is called, I don't want to mess it up, Chandra Namaskritya Mantraha. And it's about um, bowing or linking to the moon. The moon represents the mind that's always changing. And when the moon is full in particular, it's representing that moon that's calm, that mind that's calm, full, stable, and reflecting the light of the soul, which is represented by the sun. So the sun is a metaphor for the radiance of the heart or the soul. And the mind is reflecting that light and receiving it, and hopefully a tool of our embodiment rather than running the show. Sur surrendering the mind to the heart. Okay, so we'll start with an ohm together, hands at the heart. Oh. Raise the hands down. And we're going to be doing inhale, arms up. I'll show you the movement first. And exhale, hands through the center, through the heart, coming forward. You could do this to the seat of a chair or all the way down. Bowing the head to the heart. 
and inhale and bring the arms to the side, creating a circle, drawing the moon and visualizing the full moon all around me. And exhale, coming forward, bowing the head to the heart, to the earth. Inhale, the moon is rising. Visualizing myself tracing the full moon with my arms and exhale. Bowing the head to the heart, to the earth. And we're going to start, just listen during the inhale part. Oshadaya Sambadante. You can try to join me or just listen. Oshadaya Sambadante. Next part of the chant. So many Meditating on the moon, we're linking to the herbs, the aushadam, the medicinal herbs that flourish in the light of the moon. And when we bring those herbs into our body, We develop, we bring that medicine of the moon into our bodies. We develop soma or ojas, immunity, vitality, energy, soma. You ready? Coming down to the earth. I'm just sitting for a moment. It's a transition. You can be in a chair if you like. We're sitting in Vajrasana or um, another seated pose. So we're going to do a transition of pranayama. And again, working on that ojas that vitality and yeah, put on any layers you need to as you start to cool down. We're gonna do some palming of the eyes and movement, rubbing the hands together, putting the Palms on the eyes, anywhere that's comfortable. So um, you can just cup 
the eyes or actually put a little bit of gentle pressure on the eyeballs themselves. So just know what's more comfortable for you. Bowing the head down as you exhale. And inhale, you're going to roll up. And exhale, rolling down. This hurts your neck and shoulders. You can just inhale, come to center rather than all the way up. And add shittily to this inhale, tongue or Siddhkari tea. Which is to promote ojas, exhale, ujjayi, light ujjayi, that only you can hear. Inhale, tongue, breathing through a curled tongue or through your teeth, gentle jaw. Exhale. Relaxing mind. Relaxing those eyes, those pitta, fiery eyes. Went to the fire in the liver. And resting center. Inhale, bringing one arm up and stretching nice and long. Exhale, coming down. Other side, inhale. Reaching really long. Exhale. Inhale, opposite arm coming up, and bending at the elbow, and exhale down. Other side, inhale, bending at the elbow, inhale coming up. Any at the elbow, and if it's comfortable, interlock that hand with the other and stretch underneath the armpit. And stay there, breath. Inhale, release. And exhale down. Inhale, opposite arm up. Exhale, interlock fingers, inhale here, and exhale, stretching into the side body, and stay, so you can play with how you work the breath, you can do that all in one breath, or split it up like I just showed, and a few smaller breaths, when you're ready, release, and another side, repeating that again, inhale, I'm just going to go right into it, but you can add an exhale here, Stay in a few breaths now. Inhale, release. Exhale down. Inhale, arm up. Again, you can exhale, come to the side. Bring your fingers together. Inhale, stay. Exhale, stay for a few breaths. Harder to have longer breaths in those 
bend, spread to the best you can. Inhale, extend. Exhale, down, down. Bringing the hands forward, interlock the fingers, palms facing out as you exhale, stretching away. Inhale, bring the hands to the heart, elbows back. Exhale, stretch away. The seated cat cow, avoiding the regular cat cow because of wrist hand issues in the room. You can do the regular cat cow if you prefer. It's comfortable. Inhale, bring the hands up, the head, interlocked fingers, and stay here. Or inhale, stretching up. Exhale, release the hands to the top of the head. Inhale, bring the hands up, and maybe bring the chin down. Or just stay in the full position and breathe. Pose is said to align the spine. Make it like a Vajra, a diamond. This pose is called Vajrasana diamond pose. It makes the spine very straight. This is a resource for scoliosis or other imbalances of the spine. I'm also doing this for arthritis in the hands, elbow, and working with shoulder injuries. Exhale, release. Okay, when you're ready, you're going to lie on your bolster or rolled mat. And we're going to rest. I'm going to put my feet at the wall. That's an option. You can have a pillow or another bolster under your legs. You can lie on a rolled mat blankets over it. You can also, for your lower back, add another block or pillow underneath the buttocks. You can also lie on a bed pillow. You might be feeling quite a bit of stretch in the pecs, the toral muscles, So this lower um, pillow or block is to just decrease lower doses in the lower back, that sway back if you have a back like that. And if you're getting cold, cover yourself with a blanket. You remember your intention for today linked to your heart center, your mind, relaxing your mind, whatever it was, your intention for today, be it a word, a phrase, an image. Try to bring that back to your consciousness right now. It's a word, you can make a mantra out of it. By using a phrase, 
So mine is, may I rest in infinite harmony. So I'll say that as I inhale and exhale, may I rest in infinite harmony. And as you start to move into a meditative breath, perhaps you may rise and fall of the belly. You might want to solidify your mantra if you're working with one. Maybe there's a visualization that matches it. So mine is lying in a hammock and just feeling myself sway back and forth. And the sky is bright blue. I could say that word harmony to myself, or I'm going to use the Sanskrit ananta. Ananta. Using visualization, try to bring in the five senses. Through your sensations, your feelings, and your thoughts. Any tingling in the arms, bring them lower or come out of the back arch.
Moving into your Shavasana relaxation, you bolster under the legs or pillow or just flat on your back. And you could choose to stay in this cardinal prayer longer. And I'm going to go into a seated position. And I'm chant to you the moon mantra. So if you like, you could focus your mind on the full moon. And you could imagine that soft, silvery white moon in the sky and you floating on a still, clear, warm lake filled with medicinal herbs from the meadows of the mountains around you on a summer day. The moon represents the mind. The still clear lake represents the mirror of the mind. And the mirror of the mind is clear it reflects the light of the soul. It becomes that soft, silvery light of the moon reflecting down on you, all around you. You could Feel yourself surrounded by that reflection of the moon. And bring the moon closer to you step by step so you're lying in that sphere of the moon. Three-dimensional filled with ojas or soma. This mantra you could say to yourself, inhale so, exhale ma. This is the energy of the moon. Healing energy. Inhale, so. Exhale, ma. And just keep this going in your own time as I chant for you. Chandra Namaskritya Mantraha. Oh, shut down, 
into the room, moving hands and feet, increasing the length of the breath. And when you're ready, turning onto one side and coming up to a seated position to close together.